Welcome back to chapter 3. We're going to continue from where we left off with a timeline node. Now we have a float track coming out of the alpha output pin. The first thing we're going to do is to fit the 0, 01 float value to 0 to 200, which we will use to animate the Z position of the cube. First thing we're going to do is called range unclamped. This is essentially like a fit range or fit 0, 01 in Houdini. This is the in minimum, in maximum, of course, one here, out min, out max, 200 here. So let's just go to the viewport here, select the cube, the default location here, it's sitting at zero, and essentially with the animation, we're going to move it up to 200 and then, you know, back down to zero. Okay, let's go back to the event graph and take the reference of the cube here, and we're going to drag it out of here and we're going to do set relative location. Now, why is it relative location? Well, because we want to affect the position in its local coordinates, not the world. So connect the update to here. And again, this is actually expecting a vector input. So now we have to make a vector. So make vector. And of course, this is not correct because we want to translate in the Z axis. So we do that and connect this up. Of course, now the next step would be to animate the emission amount. So let's take alpha again. And now we're going to use map range clamped. This is because we don't want negative values going into the emission amount. Double click in the wire to create a reroute node just to make things nice and clean. I'm just going to put another one here. And what we're going to do is to do a similar thing. We're going to do 0 to 1. And we're going to set 0 to 5 for the emission amount. You should be able to remember that we did create a dynamic material instance reference earlier in chapter 2. Let's use that. So drag this into here. We're going to get mat1. And what we're going to do here is to drag out of mat1. And we're going to set scalar parameter value. Okay, and now we're going to connect this to here. And we're going to pipe this into here. Remember that we created parameter names in the beginning of chapter 2. And of course, we need to change the parameter name here to emit amount. Now the animation is essentially finished. Let's do a test so that we know everything is working. So just compile this, save, go to the main level, and we're just going to drag BP cube into here just for a test. Let's just zero everything out here. And have the BP cube selected in the world outliner. And let's click blueprints and open level blueprint. And let's just say we're going to use the P key. So let's just do key P. Should be somewhere in here. There you go. So this essentially what we'll do is when we press the P key, it will fire an event. And then what we're going to do is to get a reference to BP cube in the world outliner and drag out of here, call pop. Like this. So Remember, this pop here is the pop here. So let's test the animation out. Click play here and click the mouse into the window and press P. Okay, now the emission is somehow not working. Let me see why that is the case. I figured out what the issue was. It is not in the blueprints, but actually in the material itself. So please open the material. And as you can see, we did not set the default emit color. Right now it is black. Obviously nothing will emit. So in the default value here, let's set this to pure white. Click OK. And save. Go back to the main level. Let's click play again. And click into the viewport and press the P key. Now it is working. But there is a problem. You can spam the P key. And you can actually re-trigger the animation while the animation is already playing. And we actually don't want to do that. We only want to be able to re-trigger it 
once the animation that is playing has finished. And we're going to work on that next. Okay, so let's go back into the BP cube blueprint. We're going to implement this sort of safety feature using if statements. Unreal, they are called branches. So hold B and click left. And you get this thing called a branch. I'm just going to connect it here. And this is going to be false. We'll explain that in a minute. We have to create a variable first. It's going to be a Boolean. And let's name it is playing question mark. And let's drag this in here. We're going to get and connect it. And let's click compile and make sure the default value for is playing is going to be false because a cube will begin not playing, of course. Now think about this. When we fire an event from here, it's going to ask, is this playing? It's going to be, of course, it's going to be false. It's not playing. So it's going to go ahead and play. Now, because it starts playing, we have to set is playing to true, right? like that. Now, how do we know when an animation stops playing? Well, conveniently, it is right here. So what I'm going to do is to make some room here. Let's just drag is playing and set once more. When it's finished, we're going to set is playing to false, just like that. So now everything should be good to go. We can do a little bit of cleanup here. And then let's go back to the main level. Let's click compile first and save. Click play, click into the viewport. Now you shouldn't be able to spam the P key. As you can see, you can only play once the animation stops playing. And that's it for the safety feature. Obviously, it's not very interesting to interact with the P key. What we want is the left mouse click. So go to the main level and we're going to get rid of this. And what we're going to do is to first create an action event. Go to project settings and go to input. And we're going to add an action mapping. Open it up. We're going to call it left mouse click. And we're going to choose mouse left mouse button. That's it. Let's go back to the main level blueprint. And let's create the exact event in here, which is called left mouse click action event. Now, what are we going to do from this mouse click press? We're going to do a line trace for objects. Now, what is this? Essentially, it creates a line that is perpendicular to the plane of the camera through the point of the mouse. Now, okay, that might sound a little bit complex, but essentially it's like putting a laser on top of where your mouse is flush to the screen and shooting the laser and seeing where it hits. And whatever it hits, we can get that object or actor and cast it and then do something with it. Now, it needs all these different... Uh, Inputs, we don't need all of them. The first thing we're going to do is to set the object type. Let's call make array. Of course, we're going to look for world dynamic, uh, because as you remember, all of our object types are movable and dynamic. And the last two are the start and end points. To do that, we need to get the location of our mouse in world space. To do that, we get player controller drag out of here and type get mouse sorry it's called convert mouse location to world space the start point is just going to be the location in the world coordinate system and the end point what we have to do is to take the directional vector and scale it up add the starting position and then we get the end position that's some basic vector math there and that's something you just have to do in unreal so let's just do that we do a times float now this float is going to be how far the line is going to trace we need to of course make sure that this is longer than how far the camera is to the cubes that we have so 2000 is plenty now we need to add these vectors together with vector to vector and click this and pipe it into the end. And essentially this is it. 
Now, to get the result, we need to take the out hit and do break hit result. Now, expand this. We need to get the hit actor. We're going to cast to BP cube. Now, what the hell is cast to BP cube or casting? Well, in an overly simplistic explanation, it's sort of like filtering it. Whatever code that we put after this, it'll execute only if it's of type BP cube. Now, what are we going to do? Of course, we're going to drag out of here and call the pop event. This is it for now. Let's compile, save, go back to the main level, click play, and try clicking the cube. As you can see, it works. Now, the mouse is now invisible. That, that's a problem. So go back to the main level blueprint. And in the event begin play after this, take the player control again. And we need to show mouse cursor. We're going to set show mouse cursor. And we're going to set it to true. Now let's compile save. Go back. Let's try again, and as you can see, the mouse remains visible. The last thing we're going to do in this chapter is to implement the random color emission after we click. And in order to do that, we go to main level blueprint. And in here, we're going to pass in a random color. So let's create a variable that's going to be called start color. It, it can be anything, honestly. Now. The type has to be linear color. Okay, so drag this in. We're going to get. There's something called a random set random hue. We're going to connect this up and here. Now we need to pass this through to the pop. How do we do that? We need to create a new input parameter. We go back to BP cube and go to the pop custom event. And in the inputs, we're going to click the plus. We're going to name it, let's just say in color. And we're going to set it to linear color, of course. Click compile, go back to the main level blueprint. As you can see, now the input port is open. And just drag this into here. Now we have the color coming in, but we haven't done anything to it. So to set the emission color, we need to make some space here. And let's create a function here. And we're going to call it set emit color. So go back to the event graph, we're going to drag this in here, connect it up. And having the function selected, we're going to create an input linear color. We're just going to do in color again. And let's just pass this on to this function. Make sure we keep things nice and tidy here. And back into the function. Now we have the color again, in order to change material parameters, we go to the material reference. Now we do set vector parameter value, not scalar, because we are using color. Pipe this in and connect the color into here and change the parameter to emit color, as you should be able to remember. And that's it for this. Go back to the main level, click play and click the cube. And as you can see, random color shows up every time you click. This is it for this chapter. Things are going to get a little bit more complex from the next chapter. So stay focused, stay motivated, and see you in the next chapter.